Hello, and welcome to Creep Tales with Moon. I am back with another weird story. Before I start, I need to make a confession. I am not Moon. In fact, I don't even have a name. But, I have a purpose. I am looking for the real Moon. Through this show, I hope that she'll know that I am waiting for her. But, that's a story for another day. Today, I will tell you about this, orchestrian, that survived the Titanic. I reached the Kawagachiko bus station on a bright, Saturday afternoon. I had a weekend off, from my internship, and wanted to do some sightseeing. The plan was to rent a bicycle, and paddle all the way to the Naruzawa, ice caves. Then, get back in time for the last bus home. I rented a cycle, but I made a bad choice in selecting one. The seat was too low, and my legs began to ache. The journey had just begun and in all honesty, it wasn't fun. By the time I reached the caves, my legs were so cross that they refused to walk together, and my back was screaming. I ignored the pain, and limped to the entrance of the caves. There were couples, doing coupley things. Friends taking pictures. A group of foreign students talking about some project. And then, there was me, awkwardly putting on the safety helmet. Everyone was with someone, except me. I didn't really mind being alone, but I suddenly missed my friends back home. Traveling isn't the same, when you don't have anyone to talk to. We all climbed down stones, into cold darkness. The main passage to the cave, was so tiny that people had to squat, to move forward. I followed everyone, suppressing the silent screams of my claustrophobic brain. The passage opened up to a broader interior. There were huge ice walls on my sides, with a blue light illuminating them. The temperature was below freezing, and I could see my breath, fogging up. I stood for some time, looking at the blue eyes, thinking where to go next. Then, I heard someone talking about the music forest, I turned around, and saw the group of students, from before. They wanted to visit the park, but didn't know how. I had visited the place recently, so, I gave them general directions. They were not sure if they could visit the place, but thanked me anyway. After some time, we all walked out of the cave. My trip was over. I dragged my tired feet, back to the cycle, and took off. The mellow sun was almost touching the orange horizon. I checked my phone, it was 4. The cold October night was drawing in. I was close to the station, when I had an urge, to stay a bit longer. Without stopping the cycle, I took a turn towards the music forest. Since my conversation with the students, I had been thinking about it. I also remembered, that I wanted to buy a music box. It got dark by the time I reached the park. My ears had started aching from cycling in the cold wind. I parked the bike, and, bought a ticket. Even before I entered the park, I could hear the music in the air, it was everywhere. Live concerts could be heard, all the way to the gate. I walked in, and saw a group of musicians, on the cafe table. They were lost in their melody 
playing away like it was no one else's business. The warmth of their passion was contagious, so contagious that it melted away the weariness of the day, and even healed my ear pain. The park was lit, like a Christmas tree. The pointed roofs were bordered with lights, as were the walls and bridges. The benches were decorated as photo booths with lighted pumpkins. Paper spiders hung from the trees, with cardboard caspers, popping up in different places. The mechanic toys, in the window of the souvenir shop, wore flashy costumes. Of course. It was Halloween month. I checked the park schedule, and the earliest show was at 5.30. It was an outdoor light and music performance. I still had 15 minutes at hand. So, I went to the shop, and bought my music box. The show had just started when I walked out of the shop. Afterwards, I settled down on a bench, behind one of the concert halls. The crowd was now considerably thin. I was preparing to leave, when an unexpected voice, made me jump. I didn't realize when an old man had joined me on the bench. He sat on the other end, looking at me. No, I'm fine, I told the man. Even though my heart was banging against my ribs, I gave him a tight smile, and he smiled back. He had round shoulders, rumpled wild white hair, droopy dark eyes, and his inquisitive eyebrows were raised to the sky. As he spoke, I could hear the faint sound of orchestra coming from the hall behind us. I told him, that I had seen it on my previous visit. He asked what I thought about the Philharmonic Orchestrion. But, I had no clue what that was, and, that's exactly what I told him. His face beamed with pride. I started feeling uncomfortable, why was he even talking to me, moreover, something about him, wasn't right. His eyes looked pitch black, and he kept shifting closer to me. He was now, just a few inches away. He asked me if the orchestrian story impressed me, but I was confused, so I asked him, that if it was designed for the Titanic, shouldn't it be at the bottom of the ocean? Just then, the music from the hall stopped. It grew completely silent, as the man and I sat in the darkness. I was waiting for his answer, but it looked like my question had broken something inside him. He seemed stuck. He wasn't breathing, talking, or even blinking, in fact, for a moment, he even looked a bit transparent. I thought I could see the lights behind him, shining through him. Like a warning, my phone's light fell on our faces, and I looked down. I had set an alarm for the last bus, it was almost 6.30, and I was about to miss my last ride home. Just when I got up to leave, the music started again. Suddenly, the old man hissed, and pulled me down. He grabbed my shoulder, his nose almost touching mine, he was saying something but all I could hear was noise. It was, as if an orchestra of 80 people were at war, fighting, not making any sense. It was musical chaos. The old man was pissed. His voice started ringing in my head. I couldn't break free, the best I could do was to cover my ears from his deafening tantrum. I don't remember how long that went on for, but when I came back to my senses, I was crouching on the ground with my hands taped to my ears. The old man, was gone. I looked around, but I was alone. 
something on the bench caught my eye, and I picked it up. It was a piece of wood. The year, 1910, was graved on it. I kept it back, and checked my phone, it was past 6.30, I had missed the bus. Still dizzy from my experience, I forced my legs to hurry out of the park. I had to return the rented cycle, and find a way to get back home. I didn't have time to even make sense of what just happened. At the gate, I ran into the students that I had met in the caves, they thanked me again, for the directions, and told me that they were headed the same way as me. I couldn't remember the last time I felt so relieved. We hurried back to the station, and caught the last bus, in the nick of time. I returned the rented cycle, as the passengers boarded the bus. Inside, I sat next to one of the students. I was still rattled by the events of the evening, but I felt better on being surrounded with normal people. The students started talking about the instruments in the park, and then, about the famous Philharmonic Orchestrion. They said, that on the day of its delivery to the Titanic, the orchestrion suddenly gained weight, and no one was able to move it. It was, as if it was refusing to go. One man got angry, and pushed the machine hard enough, and moved it, just a smudge. But, as soon as he did so, the orchestrion tilted and fell on him. Killing him, instantly. The machine was miraculously unscathed, but the installation was cancelled. I didn't want to believe it, but I got the feeling that I might have been talking to the Philharmonic Orchestrion itself. I wasn't sure, but it was a possibility. No wonder it snapped, when I said that it should be at the bottom of the ocean. The bus hummed gently on the road. I looked up at the moon in the sky, and fell asleep for the rest of the journey. That brings us to the end of this story. The last part really got to me. I can somehow relate to him. Being stuck inside a machine, and doing your best to not lose to fate. It's not an easy thing to do. I kinda respect the orchestrion. Well, I'll be back soon with another creepy tale, until then, stay safe, and, bye bye. <laughs>